next time you're at an airport waiting for your flight to leave, you could take this opportunity. Isn't that Oculus? No. You could take this opportunity to learn about relative velocity. I think walkways are a great way to study relative motion. Aren't they, Andy? Whatever that means. <laughs> Hi everybody, Physics Ninja here. Today what I wanna do is I wanna show you how to calculate relative velocities. So we might be interested in calculating the velocity of one object relative to another object. Um, it comes down to using two of these equations right here. I'm gonna show you how to do that. We're gonna consider examples of uh, objects moving on a moving walkway and how do we apply these equations to calculate those relative velocities like with all my videos if you like it give it a thumbs up consider subscribing to my channel okay let's get started all right first thing we have to consider just some basics we're dealing with relative velocities now if you remember what the term velocity means uh, velocity is first of all it is a vector quantity which means it has to be defined using two terms one term is the magnitude, how big or how fast it's moving. But the other term, which is really, really important, is also the direction. So in order to define any velocity, whether it's relative or not, it has to have a direction in it. So in everything that follows, my coordinate system, how I'm going to define the direction, is going to be like this. Anything moving to the right is going to be a positive velocity. For example... Right, here's a little guy walking this way. His velocity might be plus 1.0 meter per second, okay? How about the same guy moving at the same speed, but this way he's moving like this. His velocity would be minus 1.0 meters per second. Okay, so that is what I mean by the direction and by my coordinate system that I'm gonna use throughout this video. Now, the other thing that I need to do is I'm gonna just write down a definition. Before I write down the two equations, typically when you write relative velocities, you write something like this. V, a velocity of one object, comma, another object. Okay, And what this means here, the definition of this, this is the velocity of object A. This is relative to object B. Okay, so for example, if I write uh, A, for example, relative to the ground, that's what it means, right? It's the velocity of object A, in this case, relative uh, to the ground. If you write a uh, velocity of A comma C, this would mean the velocity of A relative to C. Okay, pretty straightforward. So we're going to use this in our two equations that we need to define relative velocities. All right, we have two equations that we're gonna to use to calculate relative velocities. I'll just go ahead and write them. The velocity of object A relative to B, again, it's a velocity, I put a vector sign there, is equal to minus the velocity of B relative to A. So if you simply want the relative velocity of one object relative to the other, um, if I want the opposite of the other object relative to the first, all you have to do is swap, swap the sign, right? These vectors here have the same magnitude, but they have a different direction because of that negative sign. Now, sometimes there are three objects linked together, okay? And we'll see that in the moving walkway example. If I wanted to know the velocity of object A relative to B, uh, another way of calculating it is to introduce another object. So you might know A relative to C, uh, and now you have to also know C relative to B. Okay, so this is also a very important equation that we're going to use. Now, the second one is a little harder, right? Because it involves adding two vectors. But the way to remember is you simply have to introduce another letter here, and you have to introduce it on each side. Okay, so uh, introduce it on the, left, on the right side of the first letter, and then on the left side of the second letter. Okay, that's kind of how I use... Uh, the trick I used in order to remember equation two. All right, we're gonna, now these look complicated. Let's look at some simple cases first on how do we apply both of these equations to objects moving on moving walkways. All right, let's consider this simple case over here where I am simply standing on the walkway and the walkway here is moving, right? It's moving this way here at positive 1.0 meters per second. I'm just approximating that. And if I was gonna write that as a vector, I would write it as the velocity of the walkway, I'll call it VW, relative to what? It is actually relative to the ground. 
All right, what about me? What am I doing? So for me, I'm just going to call myself object A, okay? That is simply a person that is standing still on the walkway. How would I write this velocity? So it's the velocity of what? Well, of object A, that's me. And that is what? Relative to what? Well, it's relative to the walkway, right? I am not walking relative to the walkway. My feet are always standing on the exact same platform, right? And again, again, if I am not moving, that velocity would simply be zero meters per second. So let's think about our two equations that we could apply to this problem, right? What if I wanted to say that what is my velocity of object A relative to the ground? Well, this one here I would say would be the velocity of the ground relative to A, and I would have to stick a negative sign. Uh, equation two, what would that one mean? Well, it would mean that the velocity of me, which is object A, relative to the ground, uh, is equal to the velocity of A relative to the walkway plus the velocity of the walkway relative to the ground. I'll just call it like this. So what does this mean? Right? What does our first equation mean? Well, again, if A relative to the ground, well, we can't really calculate that. We don't have it right away. So let's work with our second equation first, what we have. Because we know the velocity of A relative to the walkway. That is our first term here. And that is what I calculated uh, right here, right? I am not moving relative to that walkway. Therefore, that term is zero. Plus, what is the velocity of the walkway relative to the ground? Again, that is our second term right here. And our second term we said was one meter per second. Okay. You add both of those as vectors, you get 1.0 meters per second. That tells me that the velocity, my velocity relative to the ground is also one meters per second. Okay. So what does it mean? I'll just actually put that one back over here. That's exactly the same term over here. I can't forget my vector signs. So what does it mean in terms of this second term, right? It means that the velocity of the ground relative to me is equal to minus 1.0 meters per second. So what do both of these things mean? It means if I'm looking at my position relative to something on the ground, right? It doesn't matter what it is, okay? You could place a flower pot here. Place a flower pot on the ground. I am moving relative to the ground, anything on the ground relative to this wreath back here, I am moving this way at positive 1.0 meters per second. That is what I perceive, right? So in one second, I'm gonna move over one meter. In two seconds, I'll move over two meters. What does the second equation tell us? It tells us that, that the velocity of the ground relative to me, I am object A. Right? Relative to me, what do I see? I see the wreath moving backwards. Right? I see anything on the ground. When I am looking, I see it appears to me that the velocity here is 1.0 meters per second, but it's pointing in the opposite direction. Right? It's actually moving to the right. Okay? That's what this negative sign means. Okay? Moving to the right. All right, so that is how we can apply both of these equations to the first scenario. Let's consider another case now. All right, here's case two. We have my son Andy here who's walking on the walkway, and he's walking in the same direction as the walkway is moving relative to the ground. So again, we're going to define um, A as being the, my son Andy. And if I look at his speed relative to the walkway, right? If the walkway is not moving, he can probably walk across that walkway at positive 1.5 meters per second. Positive because he's moving to the right relative to the walkway. Now the walkway itself is moving, right? Relative to the ground. So that's what I call V walkway relative to the ground as positive one meter per second. All right, let's have a look at how we apply both of our equations now in this case. Again, I'm going to start with equation two. So we want this velocity of the person relative to the ground, right? That is the whole purpose of having these walkways is to move people faster. You don't want to move people at 1.5 meters per second. You want to move them faster. So what we have here is, again, if I stick a W here between the A and the G, I get the velocity of Andy relative to the walkway, which we just said was positive 1.5, plus what is the velocity of the walkway relative to the ground? Well, that's 1.0. If I add both of those up, you can see now that my velocity 
of my sun's velocity rather relative to the ground is positive 2.5 meters. So again, relative to anything on the ground, it could be a flower pot, right? It could be this uh, wreath over here. Doesn't matter what it is, but anything that is stationary relative to the ground is basically on the ground. So he is moving at 2.5 meters per second to the, uh, to the right. So what does our first equation tell us? Our first equation tells us that the velocity of the ground relative to him, relative to my son, is minus 2.5 meters per second, right? You simply, if I move the letters, if I swap them, it means I have to introduce a negative sign, okay? So that means relative to him, what does he see? He sees the flower pot moving this way. He sees the wreath moving this way at 2.5 meters per second. And the fact that it's moving to the left is why we have a negative sign over here. All right, let's have a look at another case. All right, case three. Um, well, we did, first case was the velocity of me, let's just say physics ninja, uh, relative to the ground as a vector. That was positive one meter per second. And in the second case, uh, that was the velocity of my son Andy, say relative to the ground. And we calculated 2.5 meters per second. What if someone now asked me, what is the velocity of Andy, say, relative to Physics Ninja, right? What is that value? Okay, so in order to answer this, what we can do here is, again, whenever you're calculating the velocity of one object relative to another, you've got to stick something else in between here. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put the ground in between us. So I'm basically applying equation two to this problem. So I want to do physics, uh, sorry, Velocity of Andy relative to Physics Ninja has to be equal to the velocity of Andy relative to the ground plus the velocity of the ground relative to Physics Ninja. So what do we know about these? Well, do I know the first term, velocity of Andy relative to the ground? Yeah, that one we know, right? That is this term right here. That's positive 2.5. What about this second term here? Well, the second term I don't know. But what I could do is I could use equation number one in order to flip these things, right? And if I flip them, what do I have to do? This is the velocity of Andy relative to the ground. That term doesn't change. If I want to flip those, I do negative sign. Negative the velocity of physics ninja relative to the ground. And this term I know, that's what I just calculated up here up above. So we actually know both of those terms. So let's go ahead now and substitute their values in our equation as vectors. So we get 2.5 meters per second. I'm not going to write the units here. And then we get what? Minus the velocity of physics ninja relative to the ground. Well, that is our first term here. That is 1.0. So at the end, what do we get? The velocity of Andy uh, relative to physics ninja, you can see that now, is approximately equal to 1.5 meters per second. OK, that is the answer. Right, and you can see now that, right, if I am just looking at my son, I can see he's moving away from me at this velocity of 1.5 meters per second. Right, if you wanted to know what is now the velocity of Physics Ninja relative to Andy, again, all you have to do, since I'm simply swapping both of those terms, I simply have to move the sign. So my son, he sees me moving to the left at a speed of 1.5 meters per second. All right, let's try one more case. All right, let's consider now what happens if you walk in the opposite direction of the walkway. All right, have a look at this video. So what am I doing? I am walking to the left relative to the walkway. All right, again, if I am considered object A, that's me, relative to the walkway, I am moving to the left at minus 1.0 meters per second. And the walkway is moving relative to the ground, again, always to the right at positive one meters per second. So what do we get? Again, if you apply equation two to this problem, again, what is the velocity of me relative to the ground in this case? You can see from the video that I'm basically not moving relative to the ground. That's because the velocity of me relative to the walkway plus the, oops, plus the velocity of the walkway relative to the ground, these numbers end up canceling out, right? Let's see what we get. We get a minus 1.0 for me relative to the walkway, plus 1.0 of the walkway relative to the ground. 
you sum both of those up, you get zero meters per second. So my velocity of me relative to the ground is zero. I am not moving. And if you see my position here relative to the wreath, relative to anything on the ground is, it's always the same position, not moving. All right, let's consider a more complicated case. Now we have two walkways. All right, we have uh, walkway number one on uh, the blue one, and we have walkway number two, which is our orange one. They're moving in different directions. So for the blue one, we have that the velocity of the walkway one relative to the ground is positive one. And for the orange one, it is minus 1.5 because it's moving to the left. Now we have two individuals, they're each walking on the walkway. So they each have a velocity relative to that walkway. Uh, this person is moving slowly relative to that walkway at 0 0.5 meters per second, moving to the right. And person two is also trying to move along the walkway. He's moving at minus two meters per second, so walking pretty fast. So what if I ask you, what is the velocity now of person B relative to person A? How would I solve this problem? Okay, well, again, if you're unsure how to begin, one thing you can do is just kind of, you have to start inserting um, relative terms in here. So let me start with maybe the ground. I don't know. It, again, if you're not 100% sure, you just try something. So if I do that, it's the velocity of B uh, relative to the ground uh, plus the velocity of the ground relative to A. Okay, and that I can do. That is basically equation two, what I previously did. Now I notice that none of these here are basically what I'm looking for. What I have is the walkway relative to the ground and walkway relative to the ground. And I have the speed of each one relative to their respective walkways. So for this one here, it's really walkway two and this one is walkway one. So what I could also do now is for each one of these terms, I could include a walkway term. For this one over here, I am looking for uh, walkway two. For this one, I'm looking for walkway one. Uh, and if you insert those terms, you're going to have four vector terms here. So this is the velocity of B relative to walkway two plus the velocity of walkway two relative to the ground. Okay. And now when I stick walkway one inside the G and the A, this is what it looks like. I get the velocity of the ground relative to walkway one plus the velocity of walkway one relative to person A. Now some of these terms I have directly and some of them we have the letters that are swapped, right? For example, um, look at our first term. This is B relative to walkway two. That is a direct term right here, right? So this one I could just substitute in right away. Walkway two relative to the ground, I also have that term directly. It's minus 1.5 meters per second. How about the next term, the ground relative to walkway one? So this term here, we actually don't have, but we know that this is equal to minus the velocity of walkway one relative to the ground. And this term I have right here. And the last one is walkway one relative to A. Again, if I swap both of those uh, letters, I know that this is minus the velocity of A relative to walkway one. So all we have to do now is simply put in the proper sign and we're going to get the velocity of B relative to A. If you just look at this, right, uh, velocity of B, this is object B or person B over here relative to A, they're moving close to each other and they're getting close together really, really fast because this guy's moving fast relative to the ground. This guy's moving fast relative to the ground. So let's go see what all these terms look like. So B relative to um, walkway two is minus 2.0 plus walkway two relative to the ground is minus 1.5. So here, uh, walkway one relative to the ground is 1.0. I have to stick the negative sign in there. So it's minus 1.0. And then plus our last term, again, I have to swap the sign. This becomes minus 0.5. All right, let's put it all together now. So the velocity of B relative to A, these guys are zooming toward each other. Uh, notice that the answer is going to be negative. Right? All the terms are negative. In here, we're gonna have uh, two plus two and another one 
gives me minus 5.0 minus uh, meters per second. Okay, that is the final answer. The negative sign simply tells me that relative to object A, which is him, what do I see? I see this guy here moving toward me here at 5.0 meters per second. Okay. Uh, relative to person B, he sees the person A moving toward him at 5 meters per second. Again, if I just swap both of those letters, I can easily write that the velocity of A relative to B is going to be equal to positive 5.0 meters per second. That is using equation 1. All right. All right. That's it for me, folks. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and you've learned how to deal with relative velocity. That's good. This case here, Andy, not moving at all. Still moving forward relative to the ground. Oh, look at that woman go. Man, she's cruising.